and we're off. Uh, welcome to the SUP Podcast. Uh, I am one of your hosts. This I'm Lawrence DeLoach. Uh, right next to me, I got my boy Chris Cheney. What's up, guys? And next to Chris, we got my man Luke Trevisi. What's up, everybody? Chilling. This is episode 143, man. We are, uh, we are in the full... What are you going to say, Chris? I no, no, no. Oh. no, go, go, go. All right, there you go. Chris was, I thought you were like getting ready to say something. I was Mm-mm. about to be, all right, there we go. Let's, episode 143. Um, we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, we, last week we talked about all the losses we were taking on sneakers and we were going to take on sneakers, the sneakers app with the, the Iowa dunks and the ambush dunks. We knew that, but this week was this weekend that passed was the win for everyone. It was supposed to be the win if you wanted them. And that is the, uh, the holiday 11s, the Jubilee 11s. Uh, I just, obviously I want to start out. Did you guys, did you guys get them? Did you attempt what's going on? I did not attempt. Uh, I feel like we said last week, I'm not like a big fan, like the patent leather. I get too self-conscious when you're like, when you're dealing with patent leather and I want to be able to enjoy a sneaker and not worry about the creasing that drastically. So I had to pass on these. If someone, I think I said before, like I respect these as an 11. I think they're like one of the most wearable 11s, mm-hmm. um, but I, they're not for me. But if someone asked me to do the pass for them, I would have gave it a shot, but no one asked. So I slept on them. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I definitely, I'm not the, the biggest 11 guy, but I, I will say for those of you guys who got them, you did get a nice 11. Uh, it just feels like, man, it just feels like every year, you know, I'm just like, I get more and more turned off by the Jordan 11, bro. But there's so many pairs and there's so many wins. But the sad thing is the demand uh, out uh, supersedes uh, the amount of pairs available. So dudes still strike out. And that's what's so fucking crazy to me, man. Mm. What's also I, crazy to me is that uh, Goat did another promotion. They did this earlier with the Fire Red 4s where this is another GR that they, um, that they decided if you sell that on our website for the next week, you get an extra $20 bonus to kind of help with the, the resale numbers. Because we all know if you look at the resale numbers, the people who are selling these right now are getting like $5 at most on resale. Well, also, also Goat is like, Goat is pushing this because Goat is the fucking middleman and Goat is getting paid, you know, the amount of Jordan 11s and Jordan 4s that they, they you know, authenticate, they're getting paid for doing basically nothing. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why it's like, yeah, yeah, you get $20, was it $20 Goat credit? Yeah, it was a $20 Goat credit. Come on, man. That's nothing. Come on, man. They know what they're doing. So I just felt like, uh, I, I feel like, yeah, that's, that's the thing. And obviously, and, and prior to the goat and, and stock X and everything people, man, I remember dudes would just drop off like seven pairs of 11s at flight club. I, I can remember, dude, I remember years, like I was dropping off, you know, three, four pairs of uh holiday 11. So uh, I, I don't, I think it's, you know, it's, it's for the kiddies. I've always said this. It's for, if we're, if you're 16 and, and 15 and, and you want to go back to, to school, even though, you know, we're in uncertain times right now and you, you want to flex on your friends, that's the sneaker to get, dude. Yeah, one hundred percent. One hundred percent, man. You're gonna see a you're gonna see a bunch of NBA players wearing them. Uh, we got the season starting in, in what a couple weeks and shit. It's still so wild to me that like we just I feel like it really just ended. Now we're going back into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it I- will be nice to have Christmas games though. You know what I mean? I feel like that's a, like a weird like traditional non tradition that I'm used to. Like I always end up watching basketball on Christmas, even though it's like ne- it's like not a thing I think about. Same. So that's going to be nice to have regular, like, that tradition. You know what I mean? I was, I was actually watching some of the preseason games. Uh, I will highlight to the preseason games uh, this weekend. And it was inter- I saw uh, LaMelo Ball. Uh, he plays for the Charlotte Hornets. And I watched, you know, I watched this, this kid. He made a, a behind-the-back pass. And I'm like, damn, Charlotte is going to be bad. But I'm just so happy for the Ball brothers. But it's also so weird to see because it the you know obviously the NBA you know it operates on twenty thousand fans a game, but when you're at these arenas and there's no one there, like they have to tighten the camera angle so you don't see and it just it feels weird because we went from the bubble to an arena that no one's in. Right. Yeah. I was watching. So, uh, I was watching the Knicks game last week, uh, just trying to see what my boys are up to, how they look in this year. They're losing. Was, no, they're not. They won their. They won the first game, man. Come on. Preseason. 
that's it's preseason, but like everybody knows, if they win the first preseason game, they're gonna win the finals. That's what that means. As uh, yes, we all do know that. You're right. you're correct, Luke. I'm anyway, sorry. Anyway, yeah, it, they were playing in the palace, and it was empty, and it was the weirdest experience just watching them play, just to silence. Mm-hmm. Um, Lamelo Puma though, he yeah. debuted. He debuted on um, playing Pumas, which is very weird. So now we have we have two ball brothers, two different brands. Mm-hmm. Is the third? Did the third one get drafted? Uh, he was trying, right? The middle uh, guy, Leangelo. Uh, after his little jail stint, he uh, he definitely he signed a contract with the Detroit Pistons. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, dude! That is the team. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's gonna make yeah. the, the final roster, but I know he's uh, he's on the team as of today. Cool. So I'm guessing, you know, hopefully he he sticks on the team, and you know he's in the, you know, I. I I always wanted to see the middle ball brother do well because I watched some, I watched him play in high school and he was super talented, even though we knew it was Lonzo was going to be the pro prospect, but we also thought Leangelo would have a shot. And we also watched LaMelo being the youngest kid. And we were like, ah, oh, this kid is going to, once he like figures it out, he's going to also be talented. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy for him, you know, and, and now he hopefully that NBA contract, even though it won't be like his two younger brothers uh, or his, his brothers, he won't have to steal anything. So, you know. Yeah, we're cool. That's what's up. It's, it's funny that they're all in now. I mean, even you remember a couple of years ago, it was just like it was the big talk of like the older brother and the younger ones. Everyone started focused. Now it's just crazy to think about all three of them are in, potentially going to play in the same league. No, yeah. I'm I'm happy for uh, uh what's his name Lavar. I'm happy for that dude. <laughs> the man did it. He fucking he did, did it. it. <laughs> he really did. What a success story that no one is gonna give him the credit. No, <laughs> dude. When he, do you remember when Lamelo was like when he was like in high school and he try he dropped like 55 points in a game, but all of the highlights are him just chucking a chucking threes left and right. Yes. <laughs> You remember, and then from now like half like, court exactly from half court and then he's like and then now he's like playing like he was playing with Austra- like australian basketball and then now he's playing the it's crazy the, it's, the story of it, these kids is amazing yeah bro i'm i'm hyped for him man and and shout out to lonzo who was part of the uh the big uh the big trade that brought my guy anthony davis to the lakers i was really uh, you know mm. I, I was excited for lonzo to, to play with the lakers but we got anthony davis we we won a championship and uh, and AD is uh, ESPN ranked them uh, on the top. I think it was like top twenty players of the year. He um, he is uh, ranked number two, and I'm excited to see what him and LeBron do in year number two. Uh, but also, I'm excited to see because AD was the guy who was uh, in terms of rocking sneakers. AD was the dude who was bringing out all the Kobe's, the the player edition Kobe's. Yeah, he had some special treatment. I think once he got to the Laker locker room. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He got some special treatment. In it. And we saw him, uh, we saw a practice shot of him playing some, uh, or practicing in some, uh, what's the best way you would, what would you describe them as, Chris? Uh, there were questions to me. They looked exactly like Reebok questions with uh, fishnet on them. Boom. <sighs> Look at those things. Wow. So they're called the Nike Cosmic Unity Basketball Shoe. Yeah, because whoever drew these was fucking in outer space. When you drew <laughs> Me personally, and, and I'm going to say this, and, and, and Nike has transitioned in the past decade, and maybe it's the streets, have transitioned from basketball sneakers being lifestyle sneakers to basketball sneakers being, hey, you're going to play basketball on the court in these shoes. Mm-hmm. And these look extremely comfortable. Now, we do have to address the obvious elephant in the room. Yes, this, the Cosmic Unity does look like a cross between a, a Reebok, what is it, answer, or what is the question? The or, question, the first question. Yeah. Yes, and, really and, a, question, and a Kobe sneaker. Uh, a Kobe it looks shirt. like, a co- yeah, a couple Kobe's. There's like the, it has like a similar shape to the nine low with the outsole of a question, but then like the front body of the Kobe three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know what I mean it's like from a design perspective I don't know if like they those were like references if those three were references that the guy was like all right I'm gonna mash these up and make like a tight shoe I mean like the sketch might have looked cool but I don't know if this hits like that this kind of reminds me of the 35 too like in like how the design I don't know if it's because of like all like the weird spiral kind of designs that's going on with it right it does kind of remind me of that 
So I, I maybe like the same guy who designed the 35s did these as well. No, I, tr I mean, like, they do look like a good ball shoe. You know what I mean? Like, that back heel component. Sorry for the only audio listeners. But the back heel component looks strong. I mean, it looks like they have the swoosh as a part of the structure to hold your foot in place. And, I mean, like, I mean, I, play, I played in questions as a kid, so I know questions are a great basketball shoe. Mm -hmm. As a basketball, as a, as a Laker fan and an Anthony Davis fan, whatever uh, provides him the most stability and comfort, because I watch so many Lakers games, this uh this past season where especially in the in the the bubble where anthony davis was wearing uh he was wearing uh kobe's and dude every play he was falling on the ground and you would get so nervous <laughs> yeah. like i remember uh, i was watching i think it was game five of the the, the finals between them and the, the heat and i remember ad fell and and i think he just reached for it looked like his achilles and i got so scared because i'm like this guy is so fragile and i'm like Lowe's are synonymous with you know people hurting themselves and twisting yeah. ankles and stuff like that so when i saw him playing at kobe's i was like shit i don't like this for him but to see that that sneaker i, I i'm a little I, i'm like if he, if he plays in that during the regular season i'm fucking pumped the strongest part about him is his uh unibrow that's the strongest part of him not yeah, not yeah. not the immense talent that this 26 <laughs> or 27 year old kid has he's fucking top three players in the NBA, not just the unibrow? No, it's, it's the strongest part about it. It's the confidence that generates from the <laughs> yeah, unibrow. It's the confidence. It's the confidence that, gives him, that helps with the talent. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's so funny because, like, you know, we're going to have him playing in an ugly shoe on Christmas. It makes me think of ugly sweaters. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you guys on the ugly sweater shit? Do you guys do that? I don't have an ugly sweater, but... I mean, I have plenty of ugly shoes, but I mean, do you guys do the sweater thing? Not really. I've never really done the ugly sweater thing, uh, mostly because I'm a, uh, I was single for most of, uh, most of my Christmases. So <laughs> I, I've never had somebody drag me to like a place and be like, we're doing ugly sweater. You know, I've never done that before. <laughs> Lawrence, have you done it before? Uh, I have worn ugly sweaters to work. <laughs> <laughs> to work? I, I'm not going to say they were for... You know, in my opinion, they weren't ugly. They were just like, yo, this shit fashionable. Like, you know what right. I mean? Like, I have a patchwork yeah. sweater that I wore that people were like, that shit is ugly as fuck. But I was like, no, this shit is fire. Like a Huxtable uh, sweater, you would say? Like, it's a, it, I'll, I'll send you guys a picture of it one day. It's, a, it's, it's somewhere on Instagram, probably, or Facebook or somewhere where it's a, it's a polo patchwork sweater. It's brown. I wore some wild glasses with it. It's insane. People oh, you know what? I think I've seen the photo before. Now, it's a lot of people... A lot of people think that's ugly, but I like it. But I have worn actual ugly, ugly sweaters, like the you know the theme, the Christmas theme sweaters. Yes, I have. I think it's it's so weird to me because like I guess it's like I guess these sweaters started being made in the fifties, but I, I guess it was like around two thousand, like early two thousands. I think two thousand two, if I remember correctly, that like Canada made it a thing. Really, and then like yeah, it's like this. Re it's like this weird reverse trend of like. These these sweaters that we we know as ugly sweaters, they're not like ugly. They're just like a mishmash of like weird designs on the front. Like it became this weird like festive event. It's not like people actually wear ugly sweaters to these parties. They just wear one style of sweater with like a weird gimmick on the front. Bro, it's just these hype beasts, man. They take the concept and then they ruin it for everybody else. They do forget, they devoid the history behind it. Exactly it's just getting hype. That's what it is. It's the well, hype. Of there's definitely like hype versions of it, but like I feel like everybody like I remember seeing like a Pornhub one. I remember seeing like uh, a Natty Ice one. It's like this weird accessory that like we're, like like random brands sell around Christmas. Yeah, I don't like. I feel like an ugly sweater party should be like an actual ugly sweater though. Yeah. But what would you? What okay? So what what would you say would go on an ugly sweater though? Like a fucking reindeer and a Christmas tree, or what? Like honestly. Um, all right. So we'll see. This is, that, this is the hard part about it because it became like a, a festive, like, all right, we'll all get together. We'll wear a, one type of sweater and have some Christmas shit on it. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that like, yo, find like, like wear your grandma's sweater to the party. Mm -hmm. Ooh. You know what I mean? That's ugly sweater. Uh, that's an ugly sweater for the low. I like What'd that. What'd you call your grandma? I, I said sweater and with an L. That's what I said. I didn't say anything derogatory about my grandmother. Um, like that dunk it came out that's supposed to be like an ugly sweater theme. They've like done ugly sweater shoe shit. These ones? Oh, 
you got it coming up. Yeah, so those – actually, now I can't tell which – I think it's that middle one with the blue check. Uh, the blue check one? I think those are the, this year's. Uh, um, but, I mean, look, you got those Brooks ones. Sorry, again, for audio-only listeners. There's a Brooks ones here. Like, those Air Forces are cool, but, like, four ugly sweater shoes, like, those are pretty chill. I think if, like, there should, you should just have, like, a, if you're going to do that, just make an ugly shoe. Or am I crazy? I mean, I, get, I hear what you're saying. Like, if you're going to do ugly, just lean into it. Right? Do you guys want to have an ugly shoe party? Oh, shit. What's, okay, so hold on. What's the ugliest shoe you guys would say you have in your closet then? That you oh. own? Just off the top of your head, the ugliest shoe, the shoe that, that you like, but it is fucking kind of ugly. Uh, I have a pair of British Knights that I don't think are all... I also, not to shit on Ewings, but I feel like Ewings are in there. I, I have a pair of Ewings that I could wear. Listen, I'm not going to hate. I was going to say my Ewings too. I love my Ewings, but let's, let's be real. I mean, <laughs> if I was going to choose out of any shoe, I feel like... I guess I would wear any Jordan Fusion. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys have like an ugly shoe you have in mind i mean there's a bunch that like i don't actually have that are running through my head uh like the the uh air max a lot do you guys remember those no no huh, i'll pull those up air max a lot yeah uh luke what would you wear i mean out of what i have i'd probably say my uh my ewings but no actually Lawrence, you're going to remember these when you see these. I don't know I if have a, you I have are. a pair of Dames that I'm not too big of a fan of. Dame the, These guys. It's a Pippin hybrid. Ooh, shit. Look at these fucking things. Wow. Oh, my God. Wow. Them shits are crazy. I mean, there's a bunch of them. Though, like, I feel like the 15 a good one. The Air Jordan 2010. Now I'm just thinking of ugly Jordans. But I mean, like. My Fragment 35s. <laughs> I don't have Fragment 35s, but if I did, I'd wear those. Actually, excuse me, sir. I think those are a great shoe. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You've been on record saying that you didn't like the, the, the Fragment I didn't 35s. like the 35s. I liked the Fragment ones, though. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh. What about you, Yael? What are you pulling up in to the Ugly Shoe Party? Ugly Shoe Party? Uh, I am going to say, damn, it's, it's hard. Um, if I had okay, I have a pair of Gibson SBs with the pink fur coming out of it. So the brown, the with the pink fur coming out of the the shoe. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the technically ugliest sneakers I have. It's it, some people say it's it's a nice looking shoe, but I think I'm gonna say that only because of the fur. You know, and because we brought up the um, Ball Brothers, actually a big baller brand is kind of an ugly shoe. And that's a flex. It's true. You pull up in the five hundred dollar ugly sneaker. Mhm, mhm. Yeah, buddy. Damn. We found a new way to flex on people. <laughs> ugly flex, baby. You it's got like, the yeah. ugly drip, bro. Yo, I got the ugly drip. Oh. <laughs> Yo, you nasty with it. It's so ugly. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> speaking, speaking of hate um and ugly shit uh i'm not gonna call it ugly but uh, a brand that many people have said they say makes ugly things uh bait uh, has we're gonna listen some of those hoodies they make the the ape hoodies the not the most pretty things but they have the uh the club c baits that chris you said you're a big fan of yes yeah i think i said off mic to you guys that i'm a those shoes are crazy. Oh, Luke, you got it coming up. Perfect. Boom. Bro, these are crazy to me just because, I mean, Bape and Reebok have a great relationship, but there's never been, at least to my knowledge, a Reebok that is so close to a Nike looking thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we all know that Bape took that star swoosh from Nike. They made it their own. You know what I mean? They're like, all right, we'll take the swoosh. We'll like add a little like lightning thing to it, make it a star. But to see it on a Reebok is nuts. Yeah. No, I, I like this a lot. It, it, there's a lot of implications behind having, because like you said, it is like a knockoff swoosh. And this becomes like almost like the, the ghetto Air Force One. It's, it's like, it's, I, this is weirdly breaking a lot of boundaries just because, I mean, we've had these conversations about all these bootlegs, all these fakes, a lot, all these customs, right? Mm-hmm. So when you get 
arguably like the first real official fake with the Bapesta, mm -hmm. that iconography uh, then mixed in with another brand's, one of their core silhouettes, that's allowing now Bape to not only sort of make every other brand's shoe look like a Nike, but it's sort of saying that like, this is, this is kind of fair game now. Yeah. Also, look at this, uh, the, the heel tab over here, the, the Bape, the, Yo, the Reebok The vector clip. in the Bape, that's, I love that. That is great. That's great storytelling right there. That is, that a, is great a great co-branded project. I would what even want that as a T. Uh, oh, just the, yeah. Just the chest hit right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's crazy. It's a Reebok Bapesta. Yeah. How do you feel about the, because um, uh, the shoe for the listeners, it uh, it features like the Bapesta star with like the ABC camo and the, the stars come in like different colors on all sides. So there's yeah. like a purple side and a red. There's like purple and red and then blue and, and green on each side. It looks side. like the red one, uh, the left one has the, uh, outside is the the woodland camo. The inside's the purple camo. So they took their base like, like their hardcore uh, camos they use. The right foot on the inside has the red and the blue on the outside. Yeah, how um, do you feel about that? I'm not a the. Uh, I mean, I don't like it necessarily, just because like it makes it a harder shoe to wear. Not that like you know, it's basically an all white shoe, so you you would dress according to a white shoe. But I mean, I I wish they came in like Solid woodland colors. and red, and then there was they could have got four pairs out of these. Mm -hmm. We might still get four pairs out of these if these do well. Yeah, that shit is crazy. So it releases, I don't know. I don't think there's a release date, right? Uh, it says 2020, but like no, no actual release date. Oh, well, this is the last month of 2020. So I guess we're coming out soon. Damn. I got to text somebody from Reebok. I kind of want these just because of like the story it's telling. This is great. Oof. God, that's a nice And shit. what story is that, Chris? It's the story of not ba of the history of Bape on a Reebok. They just, they took all of the things that we know Bape for, the camo, the star, and they put it on a core silhouette of Reebok, the Club C, which the Club C has had a year. Now that I'm thinking about it, uh, Pada, uh, Jound, um, some of the major collaborators that it like uh, hit New Balance this year. Uh, Club C has been a great silhouette for Reebok as of like the past two years. And I don't think it gets enough credit as a shoe. Yeah. But it's also so to me, like, that's great. It's also this like this kind of yeah. It's it's a statement on this the story of like bootleg culture, isn't it? Also, yeah. I mean, like it, I just like how it has all, everything that we know Bape for on a shoe on a Reebok, and it's calling a Reebok shoe a Bapesta, which we know to be like you said a bootleg, quote unquote, of uh, the Air Force One. Yeah. You know who gets a lot of this this the the whole babes this is, uh, um story gets brought up a lot when you're talking about one guy in particular if you guys know who I'm talking about I'm talking oh. about Warren Lotus baby yep yeah you are that's the guy that's the guy everybody compares to so did you guys hear what happened in the news with with him I guess they settled but they didn't uh, announce what the settlement was there's some sort of uh confidential agreement that was made but no one knows what it is yeah, I, I heard about that, and I thought what was interesting about that, uh, after you, you were the one that told me about it, when, when I found out, uh, I just remembered, like, last week, he put out a teaser on his Instagram that uh, the, the Reapers are in production now. Oh, the one with the shit, the, the horrible replacements. Right, the replacement dunks. Okay. Those are in production now, so people are going to really? actually get their pairs. So that's that's kind of got got me thinking. Like, what what do you think this deal was? Um, they probably uh, met him in the middle they somewhere. Probably, Nike probably said, "Listen, we we're gonna we're gonna make this exact same color and an exact same style and everything, and we'll just let you make your shits, but we're gonna make ours, and you gotta give leave us alone because Nike's probably gonna copy the exact same. They're gonna call this shits the Reaper soon." In 2021, <laughs> that would be some fire shit, yo. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. Uh, you know what? Honestly, Lawrence, I'm. I, that is one. I, I kind of think maybe Nike was just like, "Yo, give us half the money." Yeah. Really? You think so? Yeah. I mean, like that seems like you know because they had stopped the production because they were like, "That's our IP," and right. they probably. I'm not gonna call it a licensing deal, but it makes sense to me if there was some sort of kickback to Nike. 
I'll tell you, Lawrence isn't going to call it a licensing. Deal. I was, look, I was, <laughs> I was sounding it out in my head. I was like, licensing, <laughs> like, yeah, some type of licensing uh, deal. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> Always brings Chris joy. That gets me every <laughs> it Gets me every time, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that that'd be interesting if we got a if we got a that Reaper kind of colorway dunk next year from Nike, and they just be like, you know what this is, <laughs> you know what we did, just buy it. Just That's buy what I'm it. saying, just buy it. No, they'll put Travis Scott's logo on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that would be crazy. That's all they gotta do, man. Oh, hey, I don't know. I wanted to. I, I kind of wanted to like. I know we're jumping around a little bit, but I'm I'm really excited about speaking of the Reaper and weird shit. My man Sean Cliver is dropping them them oh. shits. Listen, I know we talk about it. Yeah. I, I don't usually get too animated about a pair of sneakers, but I feel like yo, I must somehow uh get the uh the holiday special uh, Those, coming yeah, up. Yeah, you're you're crazy about these Clivers, huh? I like I listen, I like them. I, I'm a you know, I, I feel like I must complete a set. And I and I definitely want them this uh I want them. That's the best way to say it. Will now, I get them? I don't know. Here's the thing. This here's the one issue I have. I wonder if this picture yeah, this. The toe box has the snowflake on it as oh, like I didn't see that before. So I noticed that this week when when uh when like more photos were coming out of it. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this? Because this is the one thing I gotta be honest with you that i'm i'm not on board with i love sh i love the Damn. love dunks i would say that i would fight to the end to say that that the sh the strange loves might be the sneaker of the year i would fight people on that but this shoe right here i don't know if i i don't know if i can get down with the with the toe box being this like oh, fuck. fuck i don't know man you know i i'm usually like all for this type of shit but for some reason, it's bothering me because that's part of the storytelling of the shoe, right? It's like it's like uh, putting it within a season. It gives you a feeling. Like when you think of the snowflake, you think of certain things. Mm -hmm. um, and even the sole, the print on the um, insole is kind of helping you get there. Yeah. But I think this is like when a celebrity uh, signs like to Chris when you wanted it just a signature so you could sell on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> like it puts it to it makes it too like like. I don't know. Maybe that was a bad analogy, but it's like it's like too like like winter snow now. Well, that that's the purpose of the sneaker. It's, it's a holiday special. It's Santa. yeah, but it's uh, we don't want we want a dunk that we can like. You, you can't wear these in July now. Oh, well, hold up! Hold yes, up. you can. Why can't you? Hold up! You can, if, but no, no, no. If I if I did have these shoes, I listen. I'm still gonna go for them. I'll be iffy about it, but July, I would argue, is the only other month you can wear these shoes. Oh, I guess yeah, you could literally go around being like Christmas in July, bro. Yeah, it's true. Christmas. I mean, July. like, I just wearing a snowflake when it's like a hundred degrees outside is just like other than wearing the Jeezy shirt. Like, I don't really see that working out. No, I think those. I think these these are definitely a summer sneaker, man. They're, they're white. They're snow. Like you know, they're <laughs> light blue. I think everything about them works for for summer for hot weather. That's true. I'm, I, uh, I, I, w I just wish it was the regular uh, perforated holes. Mm -hmm. So that that so the regular perforated holes that that's going to stop you from attempting to purchase these. No, mm -hmm. but I will say it makes me less excited. It's weird because usually I'm on the side of storytelling, but for here, here I think it takes away from it. I guess because I wanted like a regular, like it's just, you know what it is? It's just a, such a good colorway. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that's like, that's a, like the material choices here, like the placement of like the silver on the back and the gold swoosh. Like I liked it so much that I wish it was just like a sneaker for all season. You know what I mean? Like, and to your point, Lawrence, you can wear this in the summer. Like, you know, no one's going to stop you from wearing this shit, but I feel like it would make it like an all around year shoe if it had the regular holes. Gotcha. you. Now, yeah, Lawrence, you, you seem to be clearly pro snowflake toe box yeah man i don't give a fuck snowflake toe box non-snowflake toe box just, <laughs> the snow box just give me the damn sneakers man i think they're uh they're they're very unique and um and i'm i'm looking forward to taking this loss but i'm, I'm putting the positive thoughts <laughs> in the air bro i'm getting those man yeah man you know speaking of losses um and speaking of like winter christmas no or whatever uh did you guys see the rumors about the mariah carey uh 
supreme collaborative effort. Ooh, buddy, all I want for Christmas is that resell. <laughs> <laughs> But are we even guaranteed anymore that like a, a Supreme collab is going to do numbers like that? Is that a Mariah even, Carey one? Yes. Is that even, is that even guaranteed? Like I'm confused. Like I feel like a lot of the shit that comes out doesn't do, you know, whether it's like the Tupac or Madonna or all this other shit, like it just feels like. Uh, That's true. The Madonna shirt didn't really do numbers. You're right. The Tupac hologram shirt didn't really do numbers this year. Uh, what I will say is, yeah, I agree with you, Lawrence. The numbers have gone down on those, but there's something about Mariah Carey along with Christmas. Cause we know anytime someone associates Christmas, Mariah Carey's in there mm-hmm. just subconsciously. Cause we know she charts every year. She's number one album again. She legitimately loves Christmas. Yeah. And that on a Supreme T it's like the, th- it's like an extra third label. This is that the, makes like- it teaser that came out for it oh drops by jay did that yeah yeah see this is there's something because it, it's just the added christmas bro it like it's something like if they came out with a regular mariah carey photo tee would be like uh i guess but like the, it's the third label of the christmas shit mm-hmm. now would you wear this to the ugly sweater uh, the ugly christmas sweater party they'd ask me to leave because i'd be too much heat <laughs> You know, you know what's interesting as I as I've gotten older, like I I have a tough time wearing like any photo tees that Supreme does. Like I like the the Sade joint. Yeah. The, yeah. The, I've had that. I've had uh, I've had the Madonna. I've had a, a Morrissey. I've had a Morrissey uh, uh, photo tee. Uh, I just can't really do it now i don't know maybe mariah may be different maybe i'll see the design i'm like oh my god i I really want to attempt to get it Uh, i do have a michael jackson supreme team and i I always laugh because when i wear it people just give me the the fuck you doing wearing it michael jackson team (laughs) yeah it's it's harder because as time goes on like there's more things change and like Mm -hmm. culturally like things get like looked at different like michael jackson it's a perfect example Mm -hmm. but i mean like even like the madonna one madonna isn't like the madonna that we knew when that t came out Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah madonna like madonna i feel like when she like tried to make out with drake on stage whenever that was like the stock on her went down yeah and so did that photo t and then drake's stock went up when it was like yo he turned out madonna that fucking monster yeah, the Morrissey one though. I mean, it'd be funny to go through like each Bosch logo and see which one like which held up over time. Like going back and like reviewing an album, like which <laughs> which box logo T like kept its which, value. Which artist photo T? Yeah, I think I think we need to do that one episode. We need to which photo T would you feel comfortable wearing? Like, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'll I, say I, right I, off the bat, the Prodigy T is like the only one I've ever really wanted, and I've never been able to get it at a reasonable price. But that's my number one. But there's probably some other ones that I would. Oh, and the uh, let's, the, let's, damn, Chris, you're giving away all the fucking juice, man. Let's wait for another episode. That's man. true. All right, my fault, guys. My fault. My fault. Relax. <laughs> we gotta tease him. Yeah, let's. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking like of this, teasers I... and Supreme, did you see the the wheats? We got the wheats as well this year. The well, first no, month. that's that's twenty that's twenty twenty one. Yeah, bro, right. I saw the yeah. Listen, I didn't really care for the black or the white, Me but I could definitely. I could do, and I have a pair of high uh, wheat Air Force yeah. ones, but I could do a pair of Supreme Lows. Air Me Force too, ones. man. I'm I'm for these. I'm hoping these are as easy to get as the other ones, as the whites and the blacks were, uh, because I would li- actually like a pair of these. These are like, uh, these are like utilitarian. Like they could go with pretty much everything in the same way that the the white pair and the black pair can. Yeah. But this is just like a little bit of extra flavor, which I enjoy. Hmm. Mm-hmm. These are these are for the 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 dead ass Air Force <laughs> One lovers. This is the dead ass crowd right here. This is dead the ass. dead ass Supreme Low. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, Supreme. Like a lot of the, I'm gonna say, I feel like Supreme is definitely, uh, in terms of the shoes that that's coming out in the next year, with the with the addition of the Supreme uh, SB Lows. And then these, and then, you know, I'm sure there's going to be additional restocks of the white and the black. I think a lot, that's going to bring a lot of, um, what's the positive vibes or, to Supreme's uh, 
portfolio of, of footwear collapse because a lot like in the last year or so or last couple of years some of the shit they did did not take off the way it was like it was supposed to like the uh the jewel uh sb dunk lows that they did uh last yeah. year those didn't really do well they were remember oh, the, yeah. the white and red and and they had like this was the the golden blue one right is there, is yes there was one? a golden blue and then there was a black and silver mm -hmm. and those didn't really people weren't really fucking with those like that. Well, cause that was kind of pre SB wave. Even then we were, we, yeah, we were all hungry for it, but like a lot, like the execution on those was just kind of off. I didn't yeah. think those were bad though. I had a pair of white and red ones and I, and I got them and then I immediately was like, ah, these aren't for me. Yeah, well, I don't think these are bad. They're not terrible. They're, look, they're not terrible, but like for a Supreme, like for the history of like, Supreme, yes. Like when you think of like Supreme Dunks, you think of those those star. You know, it's just a great pat. Like Supreme's had better footwear come out. I think and now you say jewel, that I'm not a fan of the jewel on like the jewel swoosh. I I hate the jewel swoosh on most sneakers. Well, you know what I was about to say because you know with the new dunk coming out, the old dunk, and you say the star. I think they were trying to give you something that was a little more low key, but still had like the material pop. Because mm -hmm. like the jewel. And then the one star with the Supreme in it, it's like it takes every element that was on the other ones, mm -hmm. but it kind of it just packages it different. I would wear these before I would wear the other ones, to be honest. I'm not really like, yeah, again, I'm not mad at these, but like, I guess the, the jewel does kind of is the is the deal breaker for me. That really? jewel swoosh. I don't. Yeah, I've, I've never really liked the jewel swoosh. Uh, I, I would like if I had a jewel swoosh, I'd kind of just pick at it all day, I think, to try to get it out. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's like my ADD. <laughs> I just try to pick at it and be like, I can get this thing out. I know I can. <laughs> I, you know, you know, I'd never realized that before until right now. What? That I have ADD? <laughs> no, look, we all knew that <laughs> for mad long. Yeah. I meant like they kind of repackaged the old one into that. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Air hype Max of all... The OG is obviously like the better hype, but yeah, that's yeah, funny. I really thought about that. The Air Maxes that came out this year weren't that great either. Yes, the Air Max uh, Plus or whatever the yeah, TNs the or TN. whatever. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. I mean, we obviously Supreme has this this long story history of creating amazing collabs, whether it was foam posits or. You know, uh, uh, what was it the Air Force Ones the, uh, that they've done? They've done, you know, Jordan Fives. There's been wonderful collabs that they've done, but there was a stretch where I don't know if it was their arrogance or their like, whatever we put out, you're going to fuck with regardless. And I think people kind of said, hey, Supreme, no. Yeah. And, and I think so now when they're getting back to kind of, what made them hot remember you know we're talking 2002 uh supreme the dunk highs and now it's 18 or 19 years later when they re-release and they're taking pieces from it and people still you know aren't super fans of the colors but i feel like this is what they need to do you know and and so i'm, I'm excited for that man. yeah I'm with i that. hear that um let's see I hear that 100%. Did you, what you about, know what I go ahead? Well, I was gonna, what about hearing Kid Cudi? Oh. <laughs> Man on the Moon 3 just released. I didn't listen yet. What did you yeah, think? I didn't listen yet. Either. I did. I listened to it. It's okay. Really? It's just okay. Like th my biggest issue with it is a lot of it doesn't have it doesn't have a lot of diversity to the to the sound. The sound mm -hmm. is very much just like it's Kid Cudi humming over kind of like spacey beats. Wait, are you gonna do that thing where you're gonna say it's like not cohesive enough? The the mixing was weird. <laughs> I'm gonna do. Uh, what's up, everybody? It's Kithany Cudtano here. <laughs> Yeah, I just wish the sequence was a little more in line. You know, he went like uh, on the on the Man of the Moon two. I wish it was a lot of one. <laughs> uh, Honestly, I just thought I thought Indicut was kind of a weak album. <laughs> Breaking down music in twenty twenty is just like so funny. <laughs> it's it's very hand jobby, but like you know, it's 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 okay. It's not a great album. I'm I'm gonna stand by it because the merch came out, and I already I I pulled the trigger immediately on that stuff. So I was like, I impulse bought on that. 
You did. You yeah. bought the the cactus plant Cape Cod collab stuff. I did. I did. Yeah. I got the I got the crew neck sweater, the beautiful trip sweater. Nice. And Yo, I, I am so sick of this art style. You don't like this this you don't like this Cynthia stuff? Look, I like Cynthia. Mm-hmm. I I've I've not liked some of the stuff she's done and I've like liked a lot of the stuff she's done, but I'm saying this style of art, this like badly drawn on purpose, like clip art looking, like how like it doesn't look like it could get made correctly. Like all right, so look at that middle shirt um okay. on the top, the orange. Yes. See how the M goes over the, the chest piece onto the right sleeve? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That irks the shit out of me. Ooh. Hmm. Now, I'm, I know I'm looking as like a biased, like, art guy where, you know, I'm not trying to be like that guy, but I like this. It just bothers me. You know what I mean? Like doing the like the bad art on purpose I, has a lane. But there's just been too much of it now. Like, oh, that's all cactus, like all cactus Jack, her, yay shit. All this shit's just like bad on purpose. It's kind of like clip arty. Yeah. Uh, But it also gives, but think about this though. Because of this, like, this kind of new wave of like clip art style uh, sweatshirts, anybody can be a designer now. Don't you start with me. Even Even a guy with bad handwriting like me. Don't you don't you start with me, bro? I just put I just put together a lineup for I put out a a, a sp- uh, spring summer lineup, all right, of shit for our podcast <laughs> off of the strength of Cynthia Lou and Travis Scott <laughs> making bullshit like this. Now wait, Lawrence, I kind of want to hear your opinion on this because I mean a lot of this art style has been like the main focus of what the culture. <laughs> I hate that I said that has been sort of like you know running towards like this style of art based off name. Uh, hype, whatever. But I mean, like, do you like this shit? No, I don't. I, you know, I, it's hard for me to to get into like that shit. Um, I I know some of it is. It just feels like it's it's like I'm a little too old. I feel like to be wearing yeah. uh, a man on the moon uh, uh, crew neck. Uh, maybe you know, it's interesting. Let me, the yellow. Um, Cactus plant, uh, man on the moon, beautiful trip crew neck sweat sweater, possibly, but it's just it just feels like I, I don't... got it because of like the coloring. So oh, that's, that's the one, the one you I... grabbed. This is the one I grabbed. Mm-hmm. My man Rich, he dropping one sixty on it. This is the one. I mean, chill. I've I've been selling a lot of sneakers, <laughs> <laughs> so I had like the money, and you know what? I have a pair of I have the the Dory Mons, and I saw. I saw these. I saw this shirt, and I was like, "Oh, this would actually look great with the Dorymons." So that that's why I was like, "Impulse bought this immediately." And also, like, I don't have enough of like this gold color that I've been I've been searching for anyway. It's like you just have to have a level of confidence wearing this shit. That I'm not gonna say I don't have. I just think I have. A, I put that confidence in different places. Mm, you should have put it in your unibrow. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be you'd be a basketball legend right now. Sorry, I think I just tried to pull away from the bike, but that yo, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, album's worth checking out just once if you've like if you've liked the other projects he's put out. I'm I'm a, also a big fan of Kid Cudi. Kid Cudi shaped like my high school years, uh, for better or for worse. I was definitely a pothead because of Kid Cudi. You know what? My other problem is now that you said that because he is in the lineage of like under Kanye. Yeah. Kanye's early merch, Travis's merch, and this merch, they're all in the same umbrella and they're all they're all their merch looks the same. Yeah, at this point, I, I, I hear what you're saying, yeah. I don't I don't know, man. I, I, I mean Lawrence nailed it on the head where I think he said it's like it's too young. It is very youthful because it does look like a five year old drew it. But <laughs> what what's understated and, and like you and Chris, like you said, he did come from the Kanye family tree but i think he he has influence and like luke said luke you know he luke said you know you were smoking weed and 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 you were you know listening to man on the moon come on and oh, man. and it's interesting because you know i me growing up and and you know in my um, my early 20s i remember being such a huge kanye fan but when i when i saw when i listened to kid cuddy and as you know i'm in my like mid-20s i am like this guy is amazing Mm-hmm. And 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 Kid Cudi, I remember watching. He did the uh, the HBO show How to Make It in America. 
Yeah. With the, and and that was such a cult classic to me that I was so sad that they only did I think two seasons of it. Yep. But to hear all these younger or so many younger rappers of this generation say that like, I was inspired by Kid Cudi. When you hear Travis Scott, who is one of the biggest rappers in the game, and he's like, yo, like Kid Cudi influenced me. He and I was inspired by Kid Cudi. It, he, he definitely deserves all the, the credit and the love and the flowers that he's getting because the guy was fucking amazing. You know, mm-hmm. I, to this day, I, I remember him being on what late night with, uh, with Air Mags. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he did do that. He did. That, that was a flex. I do and, remember. I remember him talking about the first time meeting Kanye and like developing beats for him in like mm-hmm. Hawaii or some shit. Mm-hmm. And just like all of that stuff, I'm very like nostalgic of. And I was yeah, like, that I have was around money. Dark... I'll help him out. You know, I'll throw money his way. That mm-hmm. was around Dark Twisted, right? Yep, that's correct. Yeah, because that that was the Hawaii session. Yeah. How do you guys feel about the Adidas to, uh, company? Oh, the uh, the new. The new sneakers from Kid Cudi? Yeah. Uh, listen, man, they're very him. I'm, uh, I, already gave, I already gave him his money for the sweaters. I'm probably not going to get these. But, oh, actually, the, the, like, the black and pink ones kind of remind – these remind me of Yeezys. Well, they're in Adidas. Yeah. But, like, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Under the tutelage of Kanye, so they – Oh, a little bit of same... verge wire, a little bit of verge wire in there. Oh, they do have a little bit of verge wire in there. I mean, this is much better. I this is more wearable to me than the merch. Mm-hmm. And it does speak to like the moon boot space. I think this was much more curated, uh, with like his vibe in mind. Yeah, I see it. I what do you think, Adele? I can't see you really fucking with these, to be honest, bud. I, I, me personally, I wouldn't, I, I'm not going to fuck with those, but I'm, I'm happy to see Kid Cudi, you know, flourish. I, I, like I said, they're, they're not for me, but. That soul reminds me of the three. Oh, this bottom. Yeah, yeah I see a little, it. A little bit. Yeah, not, not mm-hmm. necessarily the outsole, but the, like the out, like the actual bottom. That's funny. Mm-hmm. Man, everyone's just pulling from everybody these days, huh? Listen, man, Jordan 3 is one of the most, you know, innovative sneakers, you know, to this day that people, top three sneaker probably of all time. So, yeah, yeah man. Yeah, I had like a Hirachi 5, too. It's just so weird. But, you know. Well, those are Hirachis, fucking Jordan 3, Jordan 1s, you know, those Jordan 4s. Like, those are all the, the sneakers, you know, that people look back on. I'm like, man, that was my childhood. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's all this bootlegging shit going on. I'm not surprised. I'm surprised that someone hasn't taken like some of the best shit from all of those and made like one shoe. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's another conversation for another time, I guess. Listen, if you if you get me if you get me a, a supplier, if you get me somebody who can produce these Let's Get Sued ones, I could I could make that dream come true for you, buddy. Mm-hmm. I could make <laughs> that dream come true for you. Did you see? Um, what do you call? It? We were talking about Jordans. Did yep. you see? Uh, you know, twenty twenty one's coming up. We've got a, a couple of previews for Jordans. Did you see the Trophy Room Jordan ones? These have been kind of circulating on the on on the internet for the past couple of weeks. Yes. Uh, what do we think, guys? They're they're kind of they've you know they've got kind of Chicago colorway with. I thought it was like a fading. Uh, you know what? I I believe. We had one episode. I'm not going to say it was like the majority of the episode, but I believe there was one episode where we talked about how old Jordans, they'll get like a glitter in their leather. Yeah. Which is like technically mold. Right. This looks like a moldy Jordan. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I'm I'm a pass. Okay. Well, I have two things to say. Uh, one, yes, I am familiar with the glitter gate on Jordan ones because I am a victim of <laughs> glitter gate on a few of my Jordans. So uh, I do know that. Uh, two, I will say that um, what I guess the story they're trying to pull off, and if I'm correct, it, it's like it's probably going to come out All Star Weekend, mm-hmm. but uh, the it's supposed to be like the freeze out. Uh, from what I've heard, the freeze out game in, in the All Star game, Jordan's rookie year, so that's why it looks icy a little bit. If I'm correct, oh. I, I, 
Oh. So back in back in Jordan's uh, first All Star game in 1985, he was uh, the, the rumor has it that a group of veterans, uh, Isaiah, Magic, Bird, like those guys, froze Jordan out of the All Star game, but he didn't pass him the ball. They made his rookie All Star game not as favorable or memorable as it should have been. So uh, that's why you see the uh, it has like a little icy feel to it, but also. Like you said, uh, we there's so many people that enjoy or look. They want the 85s. Yeah, they want the older looking Jordans. So we're getting that. But the 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 most telling thing that this is telling me is that we're not going to get a proper Chicago Jordan one again for years. That's what. Yeah, that's that's what this tells me as well. That's exactly what I was thinking. Is that like when we got these, it was like the first thing I thought of was like, oh, how how fucking, you know, how, how cowardly to like put out this style of shoe and then put it a Chicago. Like, of course, everybody's going to buy this. This is a fucking Chicago one. This is the closest we're going to get to a Chicago one in who knows how long. So you know? we look at, we look at the history of the Chicago ones and, and we say 1985, 94, and then 2015, which yep. were extremely limited. Mm -hmm. And since then we've had like the Spider-Man, Spider-Man Chicago ones, we we're getting these, but like people are clamoring for an, another retro of the Chicago's. And I just don't think we're going to get that anytime soon. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, within the timeline of, yeah, that makes sense. Probably who knows, but it's at least three years now. Also, if we were going to talk about Jordan ones, let's look at the past year in like, in, in like in retrospect, like what do we think of like Jordan, Jordan ones really haven't like really made a mark this year. Like there's a couple of shoes of course, but like, there's nothing really like that really blew my mind from Jordan from like the Jordan one silhouette. Yeah. I mean, you had, you've had your, your, uh, your Japan models, you had some mochas. Um, but uh, other than that, I'm in my mind, I can't really think of a Jordan one that like totally blew me away this year. I guess you could argue like the Dior, but I think that was more like the, collaborative like concept and then the price tag i don't know if a lot of people are like i don't know about you guys but I, I real quick i think with the dior's they were so unobtainable that yeah. it's almost like bigfoot you know and it's like one of those sneakers <laughs> that people like i see like all these celebrities are like oh the dior's were the shoe of the year but it's like yeah when you're getting them for free from kim jones yeah it's easy to say that <clears throat> yeah Wait, Lawrence, did we tell you about the thing that happened on Clubhouse one time with the Dior's? What happened? Oh, yeah. We, had, we were bullshitting on, in Clubhouse. We had some room. We were talking about Warren Lotus back when, like, this first was going on. And some dude literally came in, and his, uh, like, his profile, Avicon, whatever, had the, the Jordans in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the Dior ones on. And we, we were like, oh, shit. And he was like, yeah, I just come in these rooms talking about sneakers to show that off. And then, like, he almost left immediately. <laughs> He, he spent like five minutes in the room just being like, uh, yep, uh-huh, agree, 100%. Just wanted to show you these. Uh, Bye-bye. Yeah. Hilarious. It yeah, just came to flex. It is like Bigfoot, man. Well, uh, next episode, we're going to get into the, the shoe of the year. And uh, mm -hmm. we're going to let's, – let's talk about like our top five sneakers on the next episode. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. let's do that. Let's sure. Perfect. I'm ready for that. Also, I you know, just to – the to point out the Jordans that are coming up, I saw a potential new shattered backboard that I really like. Let's talk, let's, yeah, let's talk about all that. Yeah, let's, let's, let's yeah. discuss that next episode. Let's, yeah, let's for sure. break that down. We can do a little bit more on the next um, one. Yeah, any final thoughts before we wrap this up, guys? No, nothing from me. Fantasy football playoffs in full swing. Let's get it, guys. And that's it, man. Are you beating my roommate or losing? Uh, I actually defeated your roommate. Hell oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> now bring you, Mike. Here. Now bring them in here, Chris. No, I'm not going to go. No, 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 we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. I know how <laughs> sensitive it is. It's a sensitive time of the year. So let's not do, let's not do that. But um, um, Well, yeah. if you want to follow all that and more, you can find Lawrence at LZD325 on all platforms. Same with Luke at Trovisus, me at Not That Cheney. Uh, our producer, Matt, is Meanie3, I believe. Um, we'll have this all in the bio and uh, Discord. Guys, join the Discord. It's it's a tight knit community now, man. Like we all know each other, we're all friends. We want you to be involved in there, and like just come join us, man. It's, yeah, it's man. a good time in there. We've been yes, we've been helping each other out with raffles. Like it's not a cook group, but you know we we do help each other out when we can. 
Also, the um, my presentation is up on the on the Patreon from last episode. From yep. Last episode, you can check that out there. It's also on the Discord. All the links are in there. Yeah, come hang out with us. There you go. Yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, so you know, uh, next week, look forward to the sneaker of the year, potentially the um, whatever else we talked about. This. What was the other thing? We got we got a lot of stuff, man. We got a lot <laughs> of stuff to unpack for next week, man. All right, all right, guys. All right. Oh yeah, the Supreme Photo Tees. That's what it was. But uh, all right, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.